Two technical terms are used for the moving target indication or detection. The older term is used in analog radar sets to describe the indication of moving targets. The newer term describes a system that should also detect targets that are movable, but currently stationary like hovering helicopters. Doppler frequency is the magic word for the detection of moving targets. When using a frequency filter to measure a Doppler frequency, much time is needed because the corresponding filters must first settle. This time is not available on the radar. However, a steady phase change determines the frequency. Therefore, it is sufficient to measure a phase change, which is assumed to remain constant during a scan. In principle, any distance can be given as a multiple of the wavelength. However, the last few centimeters are usually no longer a complete oscillation. This results in a measurable phase difference in the received frequency. With stationary reflecting objects, this phase shift is constant. When comparing the phase with the transmitting pulse, a fixed in amplitude video pulse is produced, which points up or down depending on the half wave of the oscillation. In the case of a moving target, the phase angle changes from transmitting pulse to transmitting pulse. With constant phase change, a bipolar video pulse is produced after the phase detector. The larger the Doppler frequency, the faster this pulse changes polarity. Pulse pair processing involves processing two or more pulse periods to display moving targets on an analog screen while suppressing fixed clutter signals. This process is known as moving target indication, MTI. In the phase detector, the phase shift of the echo signal is compared with the phase of a reference frequency. Coherent on-receive radars use a coherent oscillator, called COHO, to provide the reference, while fully coherent radars derive it from the master oscillator. The output of the phase detector generates a voltage that depends on the phase difference. If this difference is constant from the transmitter's pulse to the next transmitter's pulse, the output pulse of the phase detector is stable. However, if this difference changes from pulse to pulse, then the output pulse is a bipolar pulse. Echo signals of a complete pulse period are stored in a suitable analog or digital memory and compared with the echo signals of the subsequent pulse period. In the subtraction stage, fixed targets cancel each other out. The subtraction of both pulse periods from a bipolar video results in a non-zero amplitude. The faster the phase changes, the more their difference. However, this procedure would have disadvantages with very slow targets. It has only a limited suppression factor of less than 20 decibels for the fixed targets. Improving this suppression factor requires matched filters. A matched filter is the optimal linear filter for maximizing the signal-to-noise ratio for a known signal in the presence of additive stochastic noise. Matched filters are often used in signal detection to correlate a well-known signal, or template, with an unknown signal to detect the presence of the template in the unknown signal. As the animation shows, the output signal of a matched filter has a triangular shape. One should assume that the echo signal in a radar set has at least approximately the same form as the transmitted signal. But only approximately. These slight changes in the signal form are essential to distinguish the echo signals from desired and undesired reflectors. One must assume that the input signal has an unknown waveform. Therefore, the filter cannot be tuned optimally. In this case, a separate matched filter must be constructed for practically every possible Doppler frequency spectrum. Therefore, different matched filters are used in parallel in radar, and then the signal is used with the best signal to interference plus noise ratio. During further processing, the switch position of the greatest of switch is also evaluated. This switch position contains significant details about the characteristics of the echo signal. The use of multiple matched filters then leads to the term moving target detection, MTD. 
In moving target detection systems, the zero Doppler filter is a matched filter with low pass behavior, which filters out classic fixed targets. Here, echo signals are detected and suppressed, which have a waveform identical to the transmitted signal. The clutter Doppler filter also has low pass behavior but with further limits. It is designed to filter echo signals from weather clutter moving at wind speed. The Doppler filter bank consists of filters with narrow bandpass characteristics, each detecting a particular target velocity. The switch is now a multiplexer, which passes all signals to the computer. It is also possible for several filters to respond to a target at the same time. Only the computer then decides what the target is by comparing the detected characteristics of the echo signal with the data in a database. The zero Doppler filter is used in digital signal processors and radar systems. It is similar to the pulse pair processing method employed in analog radar sets, but instead of comparing two pulse periods, it compares three. The circuit has a fixed wiring that ensures a constant flow of data. The data of each pulse period moves from one input port of the adder to the next, hence the name, moving window. To achieve a zero output for a fixed target within three pulse periods, the signals are multiplied by a weighting factor. Specifically, the first and third pulse periods are weighted by a factor of 1, while the second pulse period is multiplied by a factor of minus 2. Even a slight phase difference from pulse period to pulse period can lead to an output signal, which is proportional to the Doppler frequency. Unwanted echo signals are then suppressed by threshold circuits. In some cases, the sum of the signals after summation may exceed the bit width of the system. To solve this issue, the bit width is reduced by cutting off the bits with the lowest valence. When comparing phase shifts in multiple pulse periods, there is an alternative method called integrate and dump. This technique enables a software-controlled decision on how many pulse periods should be compared and is particularly useful for producing steep edges in the filter response curve. The data is distributed by the multiplexer in the first three pulse periods to the memory. During the fourth pulse period, the data is sent to the rescaler, and then to the radar signal processor. However, the output signal is generated only at the end of a cycle. In this case, an output signal is generated only after every fourth pulse period. Therefore, to achieve continuous output signals, Multiple modules must be used in parallel, operating in successive pulse periods. The Doppler filter bank, shown in the picture with 12 filters, divides the bandwidth of the intermediate frequency into separate sections. An echo signal from a moving target can pass through one or more of these filters. This could be two adjacent filters if the Doppler frequency is between them. However, there could also be an additional Doppler frequency due to, for example, propeller rotation. In the intermediate frequency section, the Doppler frequency can take on negative values. Depending on whether it's an approaching or receding target, the Doppler frequency is proportional to the radial speed of the target. To calculate the actual ground speed of an aircraft, a minimum of two measurements from different directions is necessary assuming the course to be straight. In the graphic, the aircraft's ground speed is represented by the red arrow. This velocity vector can be broken down into two partial vectors, radial speed, in green, and tangential speed, in blue. The Doppler frequency measurement can only be obtained using the radial speed. When the aircraft flies in a circular course around the radar, it becomes invisible to the radar as it is suppressed along with the fixed targets. However, this tactic of flying in a circle only works against a single radar. In a radar group, the aircraft would then be located by another radar. Blind speed is called the radial speed of a target that causes a phase shift of a multiple of 360 degrees. Thus, the phase shift is zero and the target cannot be detected as a moving target. 
This case arises when the Doppler frequency is equal to the pulse repetition frequency. Therefore, the Doppler frequency is always scanned in the same phase section, giving the impression that it is a fixed target. To avoid such issues, it is recommended to use a pulse repetition frequency that changes permanently. Just like in lesson 1, where it was necessary for an unambiguous range. Another way to prevent blind velocity is to consider the impact of Doppler frequency on the transmit frequency. In the frequency diversity method, two different transmitting frequencies are used. The risk of blind velocity can occur in one of the two frequency channels only. Subclutter visibility, SCV, is a technical term that refers to the ability of radar to detect moving targets in the presence of interference from fixed clutter. It measures the radar's ability to detect moving targets in a strong background of interference from clutter for a certain probability of detection and false alarm rate. For instance, a subclutter visibility of 20 decibels implies that the clutter signal can be 100 times stronger than the echo signal of the moving target while still allowing the radar to detect that target and generate a target sign. MTI or MTD system's performance is often measured using subclutter visibility. Electronic clutter maps in the computer's memory use the ratio of fixed clutter to the possible signal strength of moving targets, SCR, as a quantity. You might also visit the radar tutorial on the internet. It is easy to find using the keyword radar basics, and no matter which search engine you use, it will be listed first in the results. Thank you for your attention.